Thank you for, uh, for joining me today. This is an historic day for the state of Oklahoma. For our tribal partners that are with us today, as an Oklahoman and a tribal citizen, it has been my heart's desire to provide a level playing field for all four million Oklahomans and to ensure meaningful opportunities for all our 38 federally recognized tribes that call Oklahoma home. Today, the state is announcing that we have reached two agreements of new gaming compacts. The first is with the Oto Missouri tribe and Chairman John Shotton. Chairman Shotton, thank you for being here today. The Odo tribe has called Oklahoma home for more than a century. This tribe of 3,000 citizens is known for their resilience and their deep faith. Chairman Shotton has led his tribe for more than 13 years, and his entrepreneurial spirit has allowed the Otos to build a strong economic engine for all of its citizens through banking, retail ventures, agriculture, and more. The state is grateful and honored to partner with the Oto Missouri Tribe as we establish a modernized gaming compact that expands opportunities for our tribal partners, that enhances revenue for the state from class three and covered games, and that will strengthen state tribal relations for generations to come. From day one, I have said that I want a win-win for everyone in Oklahoma. With the new gaming compact, we have accomplished four central goals. First, to create certainty and clarity around the value of exclusivity. Second, to establish competitive market fees that benefit both the tribes and the state. Third, to expand gaming in a responsible way that allows tribes to maximize new technology and enhancements utilized in gaming markets across the country. The fourth, to establish clear rules of the road for how each party is to comply with the compact, thereby keeping healthy relations between the state and the tribes for generations. This was not a take it or leave it compact from the state or the tribes. This was a win-win negotiated compact. I want to introduce Chairman Shotton now to deliver a few words before we sign our new gaming compact. Chairman Shotton. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Governor. I want to introduce my uh, fellow tribal members, tribal council members who've come to be with us today from the Ultimate Missouri Tribal Council, Mr. Ted Grant, Vice Chairman, uh, Mrs. Myra Pickering, first member, Mr. Daryl Cahiga, Secretary, Mr. Jim Hopper, tribal official, Mr. Lester Harriger, tribal official. I want to say how excited we are as a tribal council about the signing of this new Class Three gaming compact in the state of Oklahoma. At a time when so much is uncertain, with this COVID-19 situation, we've negotiated a new compact to provide stability for the Oto Missouri Tribe's future in gaming for our tribe, our employees, our patrons, our vendors, and our banking partners. And we know that when things return to normal and we're able to open our casinos again, we're gonna have a very stable foundation. The new Oto Missouri Compact provides for a lower rate than we're currently paying on our class three machines. The term is not limited to 15 years. It allows for house bank card games and table games. Sports book will be available. There are opportunities for expanded gaming in the future. While we do believe the current compact all renewed at the end of 2019 for another 15 years, it was our choice to sit down with the governor and his team to discuss what his ideas were for a new or amended compact. After weeks of productive negotiations, the result is a compact agreement that we uh, reached and we feel is a definite win-win for the Oto Missouri Tribe and the state of Oklahoma. Most importantly, as I mentioned earlier, we have a stable foundation for the Oto Missouri Tribe that is not limited to the next 15 years. 
with your clear dispute resolution parameters moving forward. I want to thank the Ultimate Missouri legal team led by Robert Rosette at Rosa LLP, as well as Governor Stitt, his staff, and legal team for all the good faith negotiation and effort that made this new compact possible for the Ultimate Missouri tribe. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chairman. Today, the state is also honored to welcome the Comanche Nation. The Comanche Nation's tribal leaders, uh, Chairman William Nelson, Vice Chairwoman Lenora Parker, thank you for being here today. This is a historic day when we sign the gaming compact between the state and the Comanche Nation. The Comanche Nation is also characterized as Lord of the Plains. They are a dominant empire that ruled over much of the plains across western Oklahoma and into the Texas Panhandle. They are the historic stewards of these lands. Today, the Comanche Nation recognizes 10,000 tribal citizens and has been a leader in economic development in Lawton and the surrounding region. It is no coincidence that standing here today are two tribes who together reflect the broad diversity of Oklahoma's tribal citizens and demonstrates the importance of the state's recognition of each 38 federally recognized tribes as an equal sovereign. As I mentioned a moment ago, this modernized gaming compact expands opportunities for our tribal partners. It enhances revenue for the state from class three and covered games, and will strengthen state tribal relations for generations to come. Each gaming compact has unique elements to include individual flat rate gaming fees on class three and covered games. This new fee structure recognizes the dynamic nature of each tribe's market share recognizing their geographic location and their access to population centers. Moving forward, the state will continue to negotiate with individual tribes, leaving behind the one-size-fits-all approach to the model gaming compact. It is important for me that Oklahoma is a top 10 state. This will require for us to eliminate the well-meaning but ineffective systems that end up benefiting only a few. I am working to guarantee that every Oklahoman and every tribe has access to opportunities that are obtainable when we all work together. Today, we will be sending these two new compacts to the Department of Interior to be ratified. I am committed to continuing productive conversations with all Oklahoma tribes. I appreciate the federal court extending mediation to last until May 31st, and I'm hopeful that we can and should accomplish more compacts over the next few weeks. I believe that together we can build a stronger future for Oklahoma's four million residents and for all the tribal citizens that call our great state home. Thank you. I now want to introduce Chairman Nelson for a few remarks. Chairman Nelson.
Thank you, Governor. When this all started, the state of Oklahoma itself, we understand the value of education. One thing I did and made sure in my colleagues here, they're here for one reason. Our Constitution does call for a seven-member quorum, legal quorum, and we did not do this by no omnipotent power because we are the stewards of a tribal council of 17,600 people. Comanches live everywhere. One thing I did do during the mediation process was provide a five-year snapshot. That snapshot was the reciprocation we do in our jurisdictional area. It was learned that we gave over billions of dollars within our jurisdiction, be it for education, even donations to churches, donations to all good things within the jurisdictional bounds of the Comanche Nation. As the governor alluded to, yes, these are our original lands. Texas is our original lands. By gum, all the way to Calgary, Canada. That was our original lands. This is what I have to read today. The Constitution of the United States does give authority to American Indians the affairs to the federal government, not to state governments. Let's make that clear. Just as the United States deals with states as governments, it also deals with American Indian tribes, nations, and townships as governments. Today is a government-to-government -government agreement. For the record, the Comanche Nation has had its own inherent place in the United States since time immemorial. Original lands that the Comanche Nation calls home is Texas, Oklahoma, and throughout the Great Plains. The Comanche Nation is not a special interest group. We are not. We are not just individuals. We are not. Or some other type of non-governmental entity. We are not. The Lords of the Plains is who we are and will forever continue to be. The Comanche Nation stands today as a sovereign government within the United States of America. The Comanche Nation has its own constitution. We adopted that in 1967. The Comanche Nation has its own tax commission, its own court, its own law enforcement, its own elections. The Comanche Nation looks upon past treaties of land in all affairs of land with the United States of America as law. Law of their presence today and for the future of its people. We are a sovereign nation within a nation. I really wish, Governor, they'd start teaching that into our Oklahoma history books. We are a nation within a nation. We are. Our supreme power is our people. Our Constitution is dynamic. 17,000 souls is our supreme power. The stewards, we have our business committee member, Donna Gill, Doya Baisovo, the great-great-granddaughter of the great chief, Quanta Parker, is our vice chair, Lenora Parker. Our ceremonial leader, who is an elected leader, Mr. June Sovo. Seven of us have to come to a legal quorum of approval. Governor, I've got to read on. Please. Okay. That supreme power of our nation is the enrolled members. The stewards of the Tribal Council are who I just said. Me included, the Vice Chair Lady, Secretary Treasurer, and four business committee members. The legal quorum of the Comanche Nation Business Committee did one thing. What we did on Saturday, April 18th, we did move to accept game and compact with the state of Oklahoma and the Comanche Nation. This is resolution number 56-2020. It was called for, it was passed by legal quorum of myself, Lady Vice Chair, our Secretary Treasurer, and our four members of our business committee. Our legal monthly meeting is continued today. We never adjourned our meeting because we have business at hand. We prove this by a motion of action. We are here at the state capital of Oklahoma 
in our capacity as a legal quorum. There's a method to all madness, right, Governor? Okay, there is. Governor Stitt, the Comanche Nation Business Committee man, Mr. June Sobo, would like to share with you this day a ceremonial of our people that will finalize, that will finalize our agreement between two governments. May God Ta'apa share his grace of peace and discernment over our ancient ways of truth and goodness. And sir, I'll let our ceremonial leader explain what he's gonna do as we do our signatures. As always, our Comanche people, we start with a prayer before we do something important like this. We end with a prayer. You ask for a ceremonial doings here. There's two feathers, the white is of the bald eagle, the gold, the black is the golden eagle. They come from our eagle sanctuary that we have in our tribe. The only sanctuary in the United States that allows us to, any uh, sanctuaries to, to breed and produce eagles. The white bald eagle to our honorable governor, Cherokee people, they hold this bird in high re in their religion, high regards. It, it guided their people as they made this way through history. The Golden Eagle done the same thing for our Comanche people. We hold it high regard. These birds, they, when our prayers are spoken, they come down, they take them up to God Almighty. They fly higher than any other God's creatures. And the Bible says these birds, the feathers, they stand for hope, faith, and charity. As we, uh, these two birds, they share the same sky together as they watch over our people. We're gonna use them. They'll, as we sign, they'll stroke the feathers and they'll bless themselves and their bless yourselves. And yeah, it's enough. <clears throat>
I'm going to turn on some time and I was to pray. Father God, as we walk together, these birds that share the same sky, we as brothers, my Oto brothers, my Cherokee brothers, we want everything good for them as we walk this Mother Earth together, our tribe will prosper together, our Oklahoma people will prosper right along with us. Father God, you bless each one that's represented here today. The Honorable Governor's staff and all his relations like that. Father God, most of all, you be with and bless and protect those who are on the front lines of this virus 19. Father God, this thing is trying to eat up your nation all across from ocean to ocean it's taking a toll it's not of you father god you're a good god of good health we say that evil one you and this disease we put under our feet in the name of jesus he got to listen to us talking to my pony father jesus no 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 like that from this day forward. As we walk together, Father God, you bless us. Forgive us of our sins, our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us. Everything be good for us. These things we ask in our son, Jesus Christ's name, and all his children said, amen. amen. Honorable Governor, yes. this you take. Thank you. In honor of this historical, we take this to Thank you so much. It's wonderful. Chairman, in honor of this occasion, when I'm not numbing us, I'm numbing us. I come to the nuts, say to all our numbing up people, we love you, as these birds love all of us. We say, I come to the nuts, I come to the nuts. Oh, you Jesus, thank you for everything. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we can get uh, Chairman Shotton can come back uh, in the room for a minute and uh, we'll open it up to a few questions. Before we get started, just wanted to uh, let the media on the line know we'll have a conference call with uh, the attorneys at 2.15 this afternoon for more background and details. Uh, we'll take a few right now. Starting with uh, Connor Hansen, Governor, will there be different compacts for each tribe? Uh, potentially, there could potentially be different compacts for each tribe. Um, every tribe is different; they have different needs. There are different population centers, uh, different access to populations, and so uh, no longer are we going to have a one-size-fits-all compact. Other states have different compacts for different tribes, and uh, we're going down the same path here. Uh, Steven Metzer wants to know, uh, what will the rates be for Class 3 gaming and what games will now be allowed that weren't before and at what rates? So we'll be releasing, uh, I think with this media statement, you'll see the compacts out there. Uh, you can go through, go through the compacts yourself on the rates. Um, and uh, the other question was covered games. So there'll be some expansion of some covered games. There'll be some sports, uh, sports book uh, that are available. Uh, so we'll have to, you can get through the details, you can read them, and, uh, um, but they'll be released here in a little bit. This is from uh, Robbie Korth. Will the legislature need to pass a law in addition to the compacts to allow the sports wagering? And if so, have legislators expressed any interest in writing legislation? You know, we think that, uh, well, first off, all 50 or so compacts uh, have never been ratified by the legislature. Uh, even the one in 2004, there was a vote of the people and uh, the governor has clearly has uh, negotiates uh, gaming compacts, they negotiate uh, um, gas compacts, tobacco. Uh, so that's really in the governor's purview to do. Uh, sports book is part of covered games. And so we don't think there's a need for the legislature to vote on that. Uh, that'll wrap it up for now, Governor. We'll, again, we'll have that conference call with attorneys for more specifics and details at 2.15. So uh, reporters, please watch your email for that. Thank you all. Thank you.